Now again, how much of each one you're going to use depends on the size and intended output of your image and the level of detail within, within your image as well. Now in this particular image, this is a picture of one of our cowboys. This is Pat. Everyone say hi, Pat. And in this image, this is what I would consider probably a, a medium level uh, detail image. Uh, we have a lot of detail in Pat and the horse. We don't have a lot of detail in the sky and in the areas out on the, uh, the grasses. So for this particular case, we're going to use settings that really work best for medium level type images. So again, make sure you've got the layer you want sharpened selected. Go to Filter, Sharpen, and then Unsharp Mask. And we'll go ahead and, and start sharpening this image. Now for this type of image, generally I'm going to start at about 180 for my amount, a radius of about 1, and probably a threshold of about 3. That threshold setting is going to help me control speckling that may occur up in the uh, sky and, and field areas. Now as I'm looking at that, this is a pretty good amount, we've, but we've got a little bit of speckling still, and we've got a somewhat of a noticeable halo. Now again, it depends on your output. If you're going to be doing a big print that's going to be typically viewed from a distance, these halos aren't going to matter as much. but in smaller outputs where you may notice the halo, you're really going to want to control that. In this case, I think we're going to see that halo in the final product, so I'm going to drop my radius a little bit. And by dropping my radius a little bit, I can probably go with a little bit higher amount. I'm also going to increase my threshold just a bit to try to control some of that speckling. Remember also, you can always use uh, plugins such as Noise Ninja if you end up with too much grain in those areas. Now as I'm looking around, this looks pretty good to my eye, and we'll take a look at the actual image down to the pixel level. And you can see by using that duplicate layer we can turn the sharpening on and off and you can see how much more texture I pick up in the bridle um, and in the uh, uh, up here such as the threads in that bridle. Notice how these pop out when I apply the sharpening. How the distinct hairs and the, the mane and the coat stand out. Um, how nicely detailed Pat's face is and so on. Now let's look at a little bit different type of image. This would be what we consider a low detail uh, image. And you can see with this particular one, we've got a lot of detail in the trees in the, in the edge as compared to the sky, but we don't have a lot of detail in the, in the clouds. And that's really where we don't want detail. So what we'll do is go in and we'll start with a little bit different group of settings. And we're working on our duplicate background layer. And in images like this, I'm generally going to start with an amount of about 1, probably a radius of about 3, and a threshold of about 10. That high threshold helps minimize speckling. You can see as I, I scroll around, we're not seeing a lot of speckling up here in those smooth areas. But we are seeing an enhancement in the, the sharpness of the tree. What I'm seeing as a problem right now is that there's a noticeable brightness that occurs behind the tree as we click on and off the preview. So I'm probably going to drop that amount a little bit just to minimize the, the strength of this filter and also bring down the rays a little bit so we don't have quite as wide of a halo. And you can see now everything sharpens up nicely without causing a noticeable halo around the tree. For our last example, we'll take an image I would call highly detailed. And this is our Sandhill Crane baby uh, who's just a few hours old. You can see we've got detail in the chick, detail in the, the mom, and detail throughout the image. There's not a lot of smooth areas. There's a little bit of areas back in the green that we'll have to worry about speckling. But for the most part, this is what we would call a high detail image. For this one, we're going to start out with probably an amount of about 300, a radius of about 0.8, and a threshold of 0. We don't have to worry as much about big halos showing up because there's not huge tonal differences in this image. There's lots of very similar similar type tones. Now as we're looking around, I do see that there's a bit of speckling in the green, so I'm going to bump my threshold just a little bit just to minimize that. And you can see just that simple little bump helps remove a lot of that uh, speckling that occurs in the background. The image still looks a little over and so I'm going to probably back this down. The key here is I'm just going to work with the numbers until I find exactly what works for this particular image. Again, no two images are the same. Your settings are always going to be a little bit different image to image. And the key is really just to, to get down the basics of what these different settings mean and to experiment. Remember also not to overdo things. It's very easy to end up with weird effects or big halos and an image that just doesn't look quite right if you get your settings off within your USM filter. 
Also remember this should be the, one of the last steps in your workflow before your final output. You don't want to have to resize your image after you've applied your USM filter. It just won't work quite right. Also remember USM can't fix an image that's just way out of focus. While it can certainly help an image that might be just a little bit off, it's not a band-aid and a soft shot is a soft shot. It's not a substitute for getting it right in the field. Make sure you're using good technique, use a tripod in low light or with uh, big lenses, and make sure that you have the right settings to get sharp shots. That you're using a higher shutter speed uh, to freeze action or that you're using the right aperture and to get the right depth of field for, for scenic shots. Then use USM to refine the sharpness of your shot for whatever output you want, whether it's an image to hang on the wall or a picture to put on your website. So that's all for this tutorial. We hope that you enjoyed it and learned a little bit about using this filter and that it helps improve your digital workflow. Please send us your feedback. We want to hear what you think, whether you loved it, hated it, ways to make it better, and of course any ideas for future segments, things that you'd like to learn about. You can email us at info at outdoorphotoworkshops.com. Also, please be sure to visit our site for tips, techniques, articles, and our complete schedule of upcoming workshops at www.outdoorphotoworkshops.com.